Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. In the middle of the ocean lies an island made of trash. 1.6 million square kilometers of waste, plastic, sewage, wait, sorry, wrong footage. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the most visible example of the plastic pollution problem in the world's oceans. Much as we are polluting the world's air with CO2 and other gases, we are polluting the world's oceans with our waste, notably plastics. Enter Team Seas, the new project from Mark I used to work at NASA Rover and Mr Capitalism on Steroids Beast, which aims to raise $30 million to remove 30 million pounds of plastic waste from the world's oceans, rivers and beaches. Now I'm not going to lie here and say that we shouldn't be taking plastic out of the ocean because, well, they're full of plastic. But this project is really rather problematic, and I have serious concerns that it could actually end up doing more harm to the topic of ocean plastics than good. Wait a minute, didn't I say this about the last project from the pair? Hashtag Team Trees. Hmm, should probably check the comments on that. Yes I did, and I stand by everything I said in that video. But it did seem like an awful lot of people missed the point I was trying to get across, so this time around I'll try to be as explicit as I can. Videos like this one and my previous one I think are important because they form an independent assessment of projects like Team Trees and Team Seas. I didn't get involved with Team Seas this year in part so that I could make an assessment video like this. Without independent, impartial assessments, and whether you believe me or not, this is impartial, we could end up in the situation where these big projects expend a whole load of effort and good intentions and achieve very little. So this matters. And clearly this is a serious video. To accomplish this assessment with Team C's, first we need to put it in perspective. In 2015 it was estimated that there's approximately 150 million tonnes of plastic in the oceans, and that humans are adding approximately 8 million tonnes of it every single year. And those numbers are out of date, because the amount of plastic that the human race produces every year has been going up. Oh, I can hear the ocean. No, that's plastic. Team Seas aims to remove 30 million pounds of plastic from the oceans. In sensible units, that's about 13,600 tonnes, which sounds like a lot, but not when compared to the 150 million tonnes of plastic in the ocean. 13,600 tonnes is, at most, about 0.01% of all the plastic in the ocean. In fact, if we assume that 8 million tonnes is added to the oceans every year, again, an underestimate, then over the three-year lifespan of Team Seas removing 13,600 tonnes, 24 million tonnes of plastic waste will be added to the oceans. Or to think of it another way, Team Seas will remove from the oceans in three years that which is added in under 15 years. Hours. I'm very cynical, probably too cynical about projects like this um, because you see a lot of them and actually they sound impressive and they look impressive but when you delve a little bit deeper into the numbers and the stats behind it all, actually their long-term impact becomes quite questionable. This is Ellie McLennan, a researcher in cetacean entanglements, meaning large marine mammals getting caught in things like fishing gear, at the University of St Andrews. She deals with the impacts of plastic pollution off the coast of Scotland every day. It doesn't even make a dent in the problem. There needs to be much, everything needs to be on a bigger scale, but the, the focus needs to be more upstream, so in the actual production of these things. Team Seas's impact on ocean plastics will be minimal, but this in itself isn't a reason to not do the project. In fact, the Team Seas website says as much here in the small print. It's not a project trying to be the solution to all ocean plastics. However, the major issue with Team Seas is that it generates a huge amount of attention around ocean plastics, which is great, but then directs that attention squarely at trying to clean up the ocean, rather than systematic changes that would actually make a difference. This is precisely the problem that I also had with Team Trees, though I want to be very clear this time that I'm not saying that the action of the project is itself bad. If I'm laying here in the ocean covered in plastic and somebody comes in to help clean some of it up, oh, thank you. By the way, could you do something about the people who are just adding the plastic in? So that My concern is with the impact of this misdirection of attention, and how it will change people's behaviour going forwards, in thinking that they've now done their part by paying for a beach cleanup specifically. Now, I'm not suggesting that Mr Beast and Mark have created this project just to chase clout and create viral visual content without seriously consulting with experts in the field. 
there's also a very problematic sociological aspect to this project where rich countries have to clean up after developing countries, getting Instagram posts along the way, without providing the infrastructure for those developing countries to help the situation themselves and actually dispose of their waste in an environmentally friendly way, which they want to do. Lena Norms actually just made a video expanding on this point, which I'll link below if you're interested. More impactful actions would be things like investing in technologies or innovations to produce either less plastic, less virgin plastic, biodegradable alternatives, investing in, particularly in developing countries, more formal waste disposal, holding producers more accountable, lobbying governments to actually make bigger, better, faster commitments. Because I mean, pledges are being made, but so many of them are still voluntary and it just doesn't work. Even if every single government or industry pledge was stuck to, it doesn't even make a dent in the problem. There are a huge number of charities who are already doing this that Team Seas could have partnered with, such as Plastics for Change, Plastic Pollution Coalition, and Beyond Plastics. Investing the money in this way would produce a far greater impact than just taking some plastic out of the oceans. It could easily stop 13,600 tonnes of plastic from being added into the oceans every single year. But unfortunately, it's a little less visually appealing. Of course, cleaning up plastics from the oceans is a good thing. I don't want to belittle these guys, and I don't want to say that doing a beach clean isn't a good thing, because, you know, who's to say that that bottle cap that you pick up wouldn't have otherwise ended up in the stomach of a seabird, or that plastic bag wouldn't have ended up around the neck of a seal or something. So it's all worthwhile doing it, but I think these campaigns and these projects are all, often badged as a sort of solution. And they're not, they do play a role, but on their own, they're, they're not actually making a very big, if any, difference at all. To stress the crucial point here, let me paint you two possible futures. In one scenario, there is no Team Seas. Plastic builds up and builds up in the oceans, and eventually people see that we need to find a solution. They limit the use of single-use plastics, and they invest in infrastructure in developing countries so that they can get rid of their waste in a sustainable way. In the second scenario, however, Team Seas does exist, and it removes some plastic from the oceans. About 0.01% of the total. And people feel like they've done their bit. Meanwhile, more and more plastic is added to the oceans. But people think, I've done my bit. Perhaps if I want to fix the problem, I will donate to another ocean cleanup, because that's what we did last time. And more and more plastic is added to the oceans. And in the end, people will hit on the same solution of stopping the source of the pollution, limiting single-use plastics, and investing in infrastructure in developing countries. But time was lost. And in that delay, more plastic was added to the ocean, such that the total amount of plastic in the ocean is greater than in the other scenario. This all links back to the concept of self-licensing that I mentioned in the previous video. People become overconfident in the impact of their action via Team Seas and less likely to actually take meaningful action, limiting the production of plastic waste in the future. So Team Seas as a project could lead to people being overconfident and mislead their attention to an ineffective solution. But of course, this only becomes a problem if we let it. By putting Team Seas in context, like in this video, and by making the broader societal problem known that we produce a lot of plastic pollution, a lot of it single waste, and that we need to widely roll out alternatives and better infrastructure, we can turn Team Seas into a broader awareness campaign for the issue of ocean plastics. For example, we could change the emphasis here. Without that, Team Seas has the potential to delay, as I outlined in those two scenarios, meaningful action on ocean plastics. And just to explicitly recap, this is because Team Seas has raised an enormous amount of attention and money, which is great, and then directed it at a really small amount of cleanup, rather than the widespread structural changes that are necessary to fix the problem. I think if you've donated or you've joined in with the beach clean then that's a really good thing you've given up you, you know you've given up your time or you've given up a little bit of money to help it's obviously made you aware of the project and you've been inspired enough to make that donation of money or time but I would just caveat that by saying that's not enough you know this one-off action it's a step in a process but it doesn't work in a silo it doesn't work on its own so yeah absolutely make your donation take part in a beach clean but don't draw the line there you have to keep going
that. I don't know why I thought it'd be anything different. This video was supported by the lovely people on my Patreon. If you'd like to get early access to my videos, see some exclusive content, and get access to the patrons only chat on my Discord, which is, I won't lie, mostly cat pictures, then head to patreon.com slash simonoxfizz. Thank you for watching to the end. I'm sure the comment section on this one will be totally civil. If you enjoyed the video or learned something from it, please do give it a like. And if you think other people would benefit from seeing it, please do share it on your socials. Thanks to Ellie for agreeing to take part in this video. If you'd like to learn more about her research, go to scottishentanglement.org. If you'd like to see more videos from me, then here is some suggested viewing. And that just leaves me to say thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This is great.